So, transpiration. Uh, we have one question which is, I derived the equation by themselves. I did the mathematician in a sense, uh, which I took the pre very first principle, I wrote the equations, I did a lot of simplifications. Uh, uh, in, in, at a certain moment, I show you the real cases, an eco-evolic system in the snow before with the energy budget, and I saw how much complexity there is, there is, there is in there. The main question is that, but the hypothesis we did in deriving those equations are still valid when we go to analyze the, the, the physical phenomena, in particular transpiration and evaporation by themselves. So, we start from transpiration. Transpiration, I mean transpiration by plants, even if I'm mean, sweating a lot today. <laughs> but, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, we smile when I say that, but uh, there is sometimes uh, some, something in the, when, when we talk about transpiration by plants and transpiration by humans or animals, is a kind of a different mechanism of generating transpiration. And uh, maybe there is uh, unconsciously some concept that the flow between the two types of transpirations and, uh, and, and make us not to really understand what is going on. Uh, this is a leaf, and uh, transpiration happens through stomata pores in the leaf that have a certain distribution. Uh, why we have transpiration in plants? We have transpiration in plants because plants using, are using water for growing. They take three, uh, three main ingredients, gamma, which is photons, light, CO2 from the atmosphere, the original atmosphere was full of CO2, like the Martian or Venusian atmosphere, which is 90% CO2. Take water, then you take um, nitrogen, phosphorus, trace of other minerals, the two ones <coughs> are the most important, and produce carbohydrate plus oxygen. So, one usual way to, to see the transpiration is to say that, uh, okay, photosynthesis requires, uh, require, uh, that uh, photosynthesis, plants for, for growing do photosynthesis, and so photosynthesis, the pho uh, transpiration is a byproduct of photosynthesis, which is not really true because photosynthesis without water doesn't happen. So, we have transpiration because transpiration is completely tied to the process of doing photosynthesis. We know the three ingredients at least, water, CO2, and light. So, it's, a, it's a, an oversimplification. If, uh, if we go at the counterfactual, we take away the water, photosynthesis doesn't happen. So, photosynthesis is uh, completely connected to the process. Even if just one part of water is used for photosynthesis, but the same is for light, just one part over 500 on average is used for producing carbohydrate. Of 500 photons, one photons produce the body of the, of, of, of the plant. But we don't say that uh, <coughs> that, that part of the, pro of the process is an essential. When we go uh, to understand uh, what happens in leaves, also we have to take care of some further things that I actually mentioned at the beginning, which is that is a leaf, we have the boundary layer, uh, we have the, the leaf and the water, uh, air is flowing over the leaf. We have turbulent flow up there and, and laminar flow close to the leaf. 
So the, what is the, 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 the profile velocity? Something linear here, close to the leaf. Logarithmic there. The first thing, thing then we say about transpiration is that, okay, we did all this bunch of stuff for uh, 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 having the, the Dalton law, but the Dalton law is acting over here, not over here. There we have another law. Which kind of law? There we have fixed law. Yeah, the, 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 actually, the, the leaf is very complex. Actually, you see the stomata usually are on the lower mound of the leaves, which is a little different from this view that I gave here, which is, looks like the, the water is evapotranspiration for the upper surface of the leaf instead is <laughs> evaporating for the lower surface of the leaf. And that, so the, all the, all the, but the figure is reverse in this case. Inside the leaf, we have diffusion. I don't go into detail here, the parenchyma, how there is a cellular structure of the leaf, but you have water vapor. High, let's say, usually if the leaf is well weathered, you have uh, uh, high contents of water vapor in equilibrium inside. And uh, this water vapor is moving by diffusion, meaning by the thick law, the law of diffusion. So in principle, it's a law different from the Dalton law, at least at the beginning. Then at the certain level here, turbulence come in. We have an interface, here we have Laminar flow and diffusion. Here we have turbulent flow. But if we don't give enough vapor to the turbulent flow, hair flow, but doesn't transport vapor. So how is made the peak slow? The flux in the peak slow is J, which is D, which is a diffusion coefficient the, of what? Of vapor in air. Times the, uh, the variation, the gradient of the concentration. You can identify that C with the Q before. <coughs> and how is treated usually? Usually, the, the, the partial differential equation over the vertical is uh, uh, simplified by a, a, a Difference equation where where the the upper is the, the delta the difference between the concentration on the very in, on the, from the internal of the leaves and the limit of the uh, disc of layer and uh, uh, instead of z, z you take the what the depth of the boundary layer where the depth of the of where the laminar flow is going. So you can write the equation like this one, GJ, where GJ is some conductance of the leaves. And times the difference in concentration. And or you can define the resistance as the inverse of the, the GJ la, la, like we did before. <coughs> so we have this law inside the the, uh, the leaf. Uh, formally, this law is absolutely equal to the data law. That's uh, the way people used to, to put it this way. So this is the data law, as I wrote before. Instead of C U, I uh, include the U in the in the C and I put G hat G, which is a conductance in this case, times the concentration of the vapor. This was the, the data law. That is the, the <coughs> law that drives evaporation close to the leaf. So they have the same, the same expression. All the calculation I did before are still valid then. 
because I can do the budget, the energy budget of a leaf, substituting to the Dalton law, the FIG law, with the, uh, but with different coefficient, and the results are equally the same. In reality, I have to couple the two things. The way is traditionally uh, you, uh, used to do is we just uh, assume that uh, uh, the resistance in the two layer sum, so we have Ra plus Rj, the two resistance, like uh, it happens in a, in a um, electric circuit. And uh, same law as before, but with the resistance for the conductance that the light modified. Nothing special except the, for, the, for the fact that uh, we have a different way to estimate the resistances or the conductances. Okay. This was, but this again was again a, 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 a see the problem for the side of the atmospheric physics in a sense. Instead, we can see the, the problem from the other side, which is, for instance, the, pro the, 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 the part from the plants. The plant uh, it, it is, the, is done by various parts. If you want to simplify, we have the leaves, we have uh, the stems, and we have the roots, three parts. And so uh, before to get uh, the water on the leaves, we, have, we need to have the water in the soil, which is absorbed into the, into the roots, moved out to the stems, and then come out from the leaves. This is a larger figure from, the, uh, uh, from stroke, where they also saw the xylem. Xylem is the are uh, the conduits from where the water goes up. Obviously, in the plants, there are also conduits that go from up to down, which are called phloem, because uh, the leaves are a chemical laboratory where sucrose is, uh, are produced, carbohydrates are produced, and then they are moved around to make the part of the plants and be and stored, for instance, in the roots. So we don't care about flowing. Maybe we care about the oxygen for a while. Flowing? You mean reverse flow? The, the name of the, in, in, in the uh, uh, plant vascular, uh, vascular system, you have two types of conduits. One is called xylem and the other is phloem. I don't have figures here, I guess, but uh, and uh, now we are taking care of, of how water goes from the soil to the leaves. Uh, potentially, you or other has to take care of how it goes the reverse, because if if there is an engine that move, this is actually a problem because we have to move water from <coughs> a place to another place for producing photosynthesis. And uh, at the same time, we have to move on the reverse direction uh, the, mm, the nutrients to, to, to grow, the sugars to, to, grow, the, to, to grow the plant. And that, but then, if they have something that moves in the other, what is that is moving in the reverse sense? It looks natural that you move things in the reverse sense you say, because you say you have, you have a gravity. So, but it, it, it doesn't work like this one. One fact is, is moving up uh, water, uh, plants uh, do, not, do not have a, a system like a heart that is pumping our blood from uh, down to up. So what is moving water from roots to over there? Different what water is, potential. Yes. Water potential at different levels. Yeah. But? What? Yes, it is water potential. 
if you measure the relative pressure of uh, water at different elevation in a plant, so you have uh, you have the water potential closest to one. In, let's say the so in the soil more or less is minus one bar, one minus one atmosphere under zero in the uh, usual condition. In uh, over there, yeah, this is a it's exaggerated, but you have minus, minus 500 bars. Then I will put in megapascal for people. <laughs> but this is an old picture. So you have a different computations from here to there. And you say, oh, then we have this, this force. We have two, uh, the different partial pressure, obviously, which is driving the water of the, the water moving from here to the atmosphere. There are a few things though to be explained. In fact, the, uh, the, the theory that now seems to be confirmed, even if it has a lot of criticism, is the cohesion tension theory. Uh, before going a little bit more in the detail, there is a measure of, uh, which is a different of uh, uh, pressure in, in various type of, uh, of plants, and you can see that the difference can be as much as 80 megapascal. Megapascal. From minus, so it means essentially that one atmosphere is one hectopascal. So it's one divided by 800 less than that. <coughs> it's a very small part of it. The atmospheric pressure is not playing any role, essentially, in this type of movement. Uh, on the average, it's around minus 30. The measure minus 30 megapascal. And here you can see the same, the same drawing, much larger. Uh, one critical aspect is uh, the stomata, that uh, leave, on this there are stomata that open and close, and uh, we will come back later also on stomata, and they control the movement of water. But the, in a, a very critical aspect of it is, what really, do you have an idea what is minus 30 mega pascal? Minus 30, this means that the water is in tension. How much in tension? Much below the, 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 the vapor tension, meaning that uh, uh, at that pressure, liquid water should not exist. Should be completely vapor. <coughs> because uh, and for the equilibrium thermodynamics, under a, a small but precise amount of, of pressures, all the liquid, liquid evaporate. So due, along the xylem, if these are the, the differences that happens in, uh, in pressure, what, does it, uh, what, what, what really happens is that we should have uh, embolism everywhere. Instead, plants here have this, these are I uh, have the ceiling structure, which is, you see, it's not like a vessel in our body, like uh, our, uh, our veins, or uh, they are kind of tubes which are separated by part, they are very small nanometer four uh, holes. And uh, the pl plants have a system for uh, Winning against embolism. Otherwise, they cannot stretch. They cannot stretch the water up there. The other problem is uh, we cannot rely actually on the idea that is capillarity driving it. Capillarity is useful, but if you want to 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 go to establish 
this small potential that you have inside the, the, the leaves, you should have cubes of nanometer. You know that the capillarity force can draw up a water to be stretched up of the long distances though, but capillarity need to have a small capillaries. For having this type of pressure, you, have, you need to have a, a capillaries of nanometers. One nanometer is 10 atom hydrogen atoms. So, if we have to rely just on capillarity, we don't get the explanation, the real explanation. In all books of plant physiology, at a certain moment, there is a the calculation says, ah, oh, but inside the cell there is this small space in which is a few nanometers. So, but that, but they usually the holes in the leaves are much larger. So, the pressure, your difference in pressure you are obtaining, in this case, are much less. The only way you can explain it is a purely dynamical, meaning the atmosphere is very has a very low partial pressure. The different pressure between the atmosphere, which is minus 300 and minus 500 megapascal, is driving inside for dynamics effect, not equilibrium effects. The, the potential which is inside the plants, and, the, and then the plants have this controller is just strong. And capillarity is also working. From our point of view, the whole thing in describing all these phenomena, which has a lot of uh, complication and things, is uh, to giving the GJ, the conduct, the leaf conductance. And uh, the leaf conductance, uh, I already simplifying a little bit uh, my talk. I, I will say, okay, if you have conductances, uh, you take the reverse, which is the resistance, and then we have several parts. You just sum the resistances. That should. Uh, we, we can argue if this is really correct, but let's say that we accept for through this, this part. And if you have a root stem and leaves, you can have a resistance in the root and a resistance in the a mean resistance in the stem and the resistance in the leaves and the different resistance also inside the leaves, depending on the place where you are. But we say the whole this resistance sum up to give the total resistance of the plant. Obviously, because each one of these resistance has its own physical reason, sometimes uh, you have to take care of them. And one resistor is, is connected to the opening and closing the stomata, which is the final controller of all the uh, The way that usually we do calculate these resistances for plants is to use, uh, the, there are two large classes of uh, models. One is the called the Volberry Leoning theory, which is the one up there, and the other is the Jarvis type of theory, Jarvis, maybe Farquhar theory, which gives the resistance as a product of uh, various functions. Okay, the idea is, uh, this is a, uh, the explanation of the single term, you have leaf conductance. This is a Balberry, it's a, I don't have an explanation for it, but it, it, it works experimentally. It was found experimentally that putting the variable in a certain way, we have perfect straight lines, which is a, a thing that everybody of us like a lot. So we have the value of the conduction, conductance of the light compensation point, we have the concentration of CO2, we have the leaf uh, net assimilation, and we have uh, various parameters which are connected to the uh, water vapor density. Instead, the, the Jarvis 
type of thing which is kind of simpler in a sense but there are some drawbacks you have the leaf conduction uh, in which is equal the maximum leaf conductance times a, a series of factors they are depending on the photosynthetic activity radiation the temp leaf temperature we know that uh, the, the other uh, uh, water flux is not only necessary to uh, bring water for the, for the inner part of the process of photosynthesis but also to keep the plants at a certain temperature because as any other chemical processes phot photosynthesis works <coughs> well in a certain range of temperature in reality all, all our rates are called C3 or C4 according to how many carbon uh, atoms they uh, or which type of uh, co uh, composition of, uh, of carbon they they use and they uh, have different range of temperature where the, the photosyn photosynthesis work well so it looks like the C3 <coughs> is uh, between around 30 degrees and the other one is around 20, 25 degrees and uh, or vice versa now I, I, I try to, to confuse the things and uh, so we have a, a control of temperature which is due to the kinetics of the chemical reaction the water water vapor deficit and the CO2 concentration and the, here there is also a foreign member which is not there in the previous formula which is also the leaf water potential the leaf water potential in some sense is a connect can be a, uh, given also uh, as the quantity of water that is present in the leaf and which includes is made dependent on the quantity of water which is present in the soil so we throw away the mass budget today we almost didn't talk about the mass budget but we put it in again here according to this coefficient in principle in our system we we will have the bulbary thing and we will have soon but right now we have solely this one so we cannot do comparison the type of, uh, of F functions that you see before are of this type. You see here, this is for temperature. You have a maximum here at 16 degrees. Here you have also the dependence of radiation, <coughs> the amount of radiation you receive. And here you have a, a, the work, uh, dependence on water deficit. And uh, there is a similar dependence also on water content. So you will deal with formulas like <coughs> this one. Concetta will uh, tell you how it works, the estimation of G's in our system. <coughs>